Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to my brother, Uncle. Yusuf. Hey, hey, name me a top father that I might have missed, brother Yusuf, if you get it. You know, because I think these are uh, the cream of the crop right about now. For real, though. And the thing about it, these ain't even TV dads. These are real dads. <laughs> I was going to say, you know something? I can't even tell you about top fathers. I don't know what any of them did in their private life with their children. I know a little bit of what's been put in the public. But as far as Deion Sanders, you know, I might put him on because I have personal experience with his descendants. Like I worked Gary Coleman Youth Center in Chicago. There was big events set by his son, his peoples coming through for the communities, et cetera, et cetera. So I would give it to. Deion Sanders. Number one. And Walter Payton. Hmm? I mean, that's, that's the thing. We don't know what not, we don't know what nobody doing behind closed doors. I don't know what any of them doing behind closed doors, but the, the Payton family and the Sanders family, they've been highly political in the city of Chicago, you know, doing things for the youth, doing things for different organizations and within different organizations. So I can speak on the Sanders and the Paytons. They, they've been active for show. Sure. Yeah, I got, we got to give some people credit for racial image. You know what I mean? Uh, guys like uh, LeVar Ball and LeBron, they project the image globally of what a standard dad should look like. So on a, on a macro level, I mean, on a micro level, I ain't know what, uh, Dion and Walter Payton family was doing Chicago, and I salute that, right? Um, and they were also good images of family, you know what I mean? So, but I, I can dig it though, I can dig the behind the shadow work is real, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, 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 I think I, I think actions speak louder, right? So, people will hold back their judgment and say, Hey, we don't know. How good or bad Dwayne was Dwayne Wade is as a father, they'll hold out that little bit of glimmer of hope, you know. But the actions kind of showing me that he's obviously was an absent father. He was not a good father, all this kind of stuff. So when you see LeBron being like in the same position as Dwayne Wade, but his boys resembling him, they men. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? They masculine men. And and you know what I'm saying? Like they showing not like they should. You know what I mean? So I think that that speaks a lot in this day and age. You feel me? Yeah, I mean, plus, you know, what they all got in common is they hoisted up the channel, right? I put you up. I put you in the league. I'm getting you on ESPN, generational wealth. While setting a good example, they don't see us arguing. I ain't slandered you on social media. So, you know, the money aspect kind of, I would, I would give him credit too for the, for the money. You know what I mean? I wish my father left, left me six, seven figures, put me in position, six, seven figures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Generational wealth definitely counts towards being a great father. We ain't no denying that, you know? Like people don't get a father no credit because he might not be there so, so much because he's grinding so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you still got to give him credit for that. Like everybody want the, uh, you know, the one on one time, but you still going to, you're going to definitely appreciate that, that your daddy went out there and grinded you know, the way he did for all of us. You know? Historically, there was no one on one time, right? Mm. You know, Yo, most man. men Yo, went man. far from home to make a living. They went to fight wars. They went for money outside their lands. And you probably saw your kid one month a year. Right, right. You Worth know, the days. It's, when the that boy, days. it's when that child became 13, 15, 17. Yeah, now this 13-year-old going on with his father, and he's saying his mother maybe, you know, one, two months out the year, you know? Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the old fashioned. That's the real way it used to be, for real. Ain't no yeah. 
you know, but e- even with the school system, look, the school system got them eight hours a day. You know what I mean? They they got to go to sleep. So it's not really much time a parent has with their own child. You feel me? The system is, the television and the, and, and the school system is raising your child. You know? So, See, what y'all, what y'all think about Cat Williams adapt, adopting all them kids? You know, we got him on the honorable mention list. I can show that too. Hold on. I, I got him because you said that. So I put Cat Williams on the honorable mention list. Look at Louis Rowan. <laughs> Damn it. Hey. All the good fun. Yeah, that man. What y'all think about uh you know, well, that kid look Ethiopian to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel or oh, indigenous stop. All of that. Cause that's what they said they seen when they came over here. They saw Ethiopian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somebody said Candace Parker father. E four. Oh, okay, that's fire. Well, yeah, in that case, we in. give it to Serena Williams and then father. He was oh, a goat. Yeah. Hey, you know, I yeah, think that's who I was thinking, bro. Serena. Yeah, and number yeah. five. Yeah, yeah, that could be number five for sure. That's who I, I give was them. That's who I was yep, that could round out the top five. Serena Venus dad. Andrew Tate. He ain't got no control over them. Andrew like Tate father was a beast. He was, but I want to publicly say, fuck Andrew Tate. Oh, because yeah, 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 I guess they they going away from blackness. <laughs> yeah, so respectfully, yeah, I've been to say, I've been to say, yeah, I could have said Khalil Muhammad if I wanted to do that, you know. Yeah, but, Khalil uh, Muhammad a beast. You know, yeah, he like honorable gone. mention. I give him some honor. <laughs> but also on the honorable mention, I got I got your boy Boosie on the honorable mention list. You know what I'm saying? Boosie, boo. You know, like I couldn't put him on the actual list because he be he be having disputes with his children, like in the public, like they be going crazy. But at the end of the day, that dude there is a real father. You know what I'm saying? For real, like you know, he bought them. Know, man, no, no, get no credit because even these men, their children might talk crazy about them. You know, I mean, Fifty Cent sent children talking crazy, and even the ones raised with their parents. Are talking crazy about their parents because they're entitled oh, to, to a degree. Too much. Too, too got, much. You know, they see all of the flaws, but none hey. of the greatness. It's like, it don't matter how many times you said yes, and, and, you say no once, and you become the bad guy. Mm-hmm. You, you, when you get into the disciplinarian hey, role, another, you become the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, now you're not a good father. Yeah, yeah. Because somebody got to do it. It's a, you know what I'm saying? It's a dirty job sometimes. But somebody got to do it. You know? Well, I'm going to say uh, Ken Griffey Sr. Ken Griffey Sr. on the honorable list. Real honorable mention. We can't think of a better father-son duo in, in baseball. Huh? That's what LeBron is about to do in basketball. Come on, man. Give him some credit. Well, I want to say, I ain't mad. I know people criticizing Cabron. I said Cabron. LeBron for the nepotism, but I like the flex of power. I like, you know, how we say out here, dropping your nuts and be like, man, look, he in here. That's what white people make their son CEO and administrative assistant. They just put their folks in position of power. So I was like, yeah, put, put them in there. But, but you know i take it all Mm -hmm. with a grain of salt because it's like the clowns get promoted and put on a pedestal and the prophets get killed or unalived you know what i'm saying yeah yeah Yeah. the money means nothing okay you you, you're super filthy rich but that's baseball my guy you're super filthy rich but that's basketball my guy you know where's the infrastructure for your people for real for real you know we still we still millionaires and billionaires or whatever. We're not billionaires, but we still millionaires for playing games. You right. I can't hey, I can't hey, hey, I, wanna, hey, I, I gotta agree. Put some respect on the ball ball. We're, we're, we're still being sold and traded. You know. 
Hey, I know somebody who you will agree with, Yusuf. What about Manute Bowl and Lil Bowl Bowl? You got to agree with Manute Bowl. I ain't heard nothing about Manute Bowl in so long. Yeah, what they doing? On. He used to hey, give his whole hey, check. Hey, he been on for the city. I get that. Yeah, he used to he used to give his NBA yep. check. Yeah, he put it on for city. And, and by no way am I, you know, knocking the brothers because I don't know if it was Richard Pryor might have said it. I want to say Richard Pryor. All of the, you know, all of these millionaires, so-called black millionaires in America, why is the so-called black community or black people in this condition? And Richard Pryor was like, yo, we got to be doing this in secret. We can't just openly do any of this because they'll stop the paycheck. Okay. If we if we improving the people, exactly. if we improving Black Americans, or if we improving Africa, or if we building international commerce, they stopping the check. I agree. I agree. Smart man. So whatever these brothers are doing, nine times out of ten, it is behind the scenes and not in the public eye because they not trying to lose them contracts or get them checks stopped. Yeah, I mean, I just want to encourage all the fathers that's like Calico that just just being in the child life is kind of like a trophy enough. You know what I mean? That's a win. That's a win right there for real. Yeah. Shout out to y'all surviving this system. I love, bro. That one. Uh. So I mean, who would you who would you say Yusuf like it may be the top top black dad, all things included? Like who would you say would be our role model for this shit? Going back to it's that's a such a vague question. I can't speak on it because I don't know anything about them as far as personal lives. When people say in top dad, they think in generational wealth. What are they thinking of? Um, you know, things of that order. What well, makes a great dad? Well, I'm asking your opinion of what we do know. We don't know all, but the little bit we do know, in your perspective and opinion, what well, who would you nominate off the little bit we know? Um, okay, father, son. Dad, top dads. I'm trying to remember the brother's name. Hey, hey, you, Van Peebles, you, the Peebles. Hey, you, Mario Van like Peebles this. and his father and all you, of them. I agree. Yeah, that was good. Too. That's a great one. That's a great one. So they, they was giving off, that's you know, with, with the Peebles, what happened with them, that's generational wealth, and that's like knowledge of self was all in one within father son packages, right? I agree. Yeah, they never exploded themselves. Yeah. Hey, pull up a picture of Mario so the so the youth, so the young ones know who we talking about. Hey, you ain't lying. This generation yeah, Z and one not even know the peoples. <laughs> nah, they definitely don't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't. Yeah, y'all y'all Google Mario Van Peebles. Badass, man. And that's just me trying to think of a good father son, you know. What's a good father? I think Peebles was a good father. Yeah. The way he maneuvered the industry, the way he raised his yeah. children, the way his children came out maneuvering the industry, the way they always did something for the people, you know, that's a bang out good father right there. Mm -hmm. hey, 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 I think Bruce Lee wasn't too bad either. You know what I mean? No, nah, Bruce but left too early. Of course, he's not black. But no, he left too early in the scene. Uh -uh. His his children were babies when he left, you know. So we can't speak on his fatherhood like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he not black anyway. You know, we gonna stick to that. We gonna stay on code. <laughs> but yeah, people though, yeah, you swept me with that one. They definitely top ten. They top ten, bro. I get to look. If I gotta, if I have to make a general statement, uh, I'm gonna throw out the peoples, right? <laughs> nah, I agree. You got me. I agree yes, sir. With that. Yeah, that was tough. Man. Uh, and why do I say uh, that? Because me, me being born in the 80s, growing up through the 90s, I caught a lot of their work in the cinema industry and, you know, music. And I caught a lot of the peoples growing up, even. You could appreciate it. Got to appreciate it because they did their thing. Yeah, they did. 
So what? I mean, I want I want to talk about Levar because no, a secondary Tupac uh, stepfather. Oh wow! Yeah, that oh, that man that's a great father because he doesn't raise children that wasn't his. Quit playing, you know. <laughs> he was definitely a revolutionary for the people. Black Panther, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Learning how to navigate in the world, I would give it to you know Shakur, Tupac's stepfather, also his moms and them, his auntie, but them the women. I will give it to that brother though. Yeah, I get, I, I, I see that. Kanye West father. He was a revolutionary Black Panther, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and look at what Kanye became, even though he seems a little nutty at times. Yeah, I ain't even know about Kanye father. Yeah, Kanye West went on a rant about that. Now you type up Black Panther and you get this stupid movie. But meanwhile, my daddy was a real Black Panther. And now you get these comic books instead of the real people, you know. <laughs> so what you think about LeVar, Yusuf? How you, I know he a little, you know, uh, more down to earth, not as refined. But what you, what's, your t- what's your take on LeVar? I don't even know LeVar. You know, I'm out of touch with today's world, you know, consider me ignoring media since like the early millennium. So I don't know most of these new entertainers, most of these new sports players or anything of that order, you know, like on this, I can only name two out of four people right here on the background. <laughs> Respectfully. What you think, Morris? What, what, what's your take on LeVar? I know he could be a little controversial. What you think about LeVar? You asked me about LeBron? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. What did you say? You asked me about LeBron? No, nah, about LeVar. What you think about LeVar? Yeah, man, like him and Bill Haney kind of fall in the same category. Well, well, they they got a lot of uh, notoriety to the point that people hate on them. Like people hate them, but they, uh, you know, they talk game stir stir up a lot of people. You feel me? So other people get mad that they they the hype man for their son. You know what I mean? But who should be the number one fan? You feel me? Who should be more diehard of a fan? You know what I'm saying? For any person should be should should be their their, their mother, their father. For real. So I just look at them for that and I be like, I be loving it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, uh, a lot of people fall into the trap. It's like saying that Vince McMahon, like if you get wrapped up into the character of Vince McMahon, you're going to hate on him, even when I tell you how great of a father of Vince McMahon might be, you know, because they wrapped up into the character more than the person. You know? yeah. I think, uh, I think Bill and LeVar kind of give hope to the, for lack of better term, the inner city kind of dad, you know what I mean? The guy that didn't go to college, but said, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a make these boys better than me. I ain't, you know, got a degree and I ain't make it to the league, but I'm going to make what came, you know what I mean, what came out of me better than me. That's all we can ever hope for, you know, and the kids would not appreciate that. I swear, my oldest son was just whining to me like a baby. I didn't want to, I got a, I got a college degree at 18. I was advanced and this and that, but my childhood was boring. I didn't ask for a college degree. I didn't ask for the special programs. And I'm looking like, nigga, are you mad at me because you got a degree at 18? You're mad at me because you was an A student all your life and you was in special programs, first in the state of Illinois, 17th in all of America. You're, you're upset at me because you became that and you think it all means nothing. So you, you'll be amazed. Like, I, I don't know what's going on with my baby. <laughs> hey, well, s- salute to you. I'm going to give you your credit, brother. For, uh, he may not recognize it in his youth. But, yeah, he don't recognize it at 22. He just say, I had a boring life and I'm lame compared to everyone else. You know, like, no, nah, son, you're missing a point. 
I got to wait a few years for you to realize what you're saying is retarded, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I want to make sure you get your credit. Thank you on behalf of society for putting that kind of guy out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, right now he's just a hippie. But nonetheless, yeah, he got his degrees. The boy, like like you said, we want to give him everything that we didn't have as city guys. Hey, I didn't go to college. I didn't get a college degree. I want to make sure my boy do. I want to make sure my children do. Now, my daughter, agriculture engineering, got her own place. She's more of a man than my oldest boy for some reason. <laughs> and my second son, uh, he in Texas right now on pre-deployment. He in National Guard, so he about to be overseas for the next nine months. He got a nine, ten month deployment. But, you know, it's all about we try to do the best for our children and put them in a better position for their future lives and, you know, get them ready for the world. And a lot of times, just like us when we were young, our children don't see the benefits of some of the things they went through, like extra homework or, you know, band class or whatever the case may be, robotics, you know. I didn't want to go to robotics. You made me. Like, nigga, quit playing. But now you know how to build a computer from scratch. Now you're a computer engineer at 20, you know. <laughs> you know, look, think about 50 cent kid, oh, 7,000 a month child support, not enough. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> You know, some of us barely saw 7000 a year back in the day. Talk about 7000 a month ain't enough for your mama. Nah, you know, the, the youth be killing me. This Generation Z or whatever we want to call them, they killing me. <laughs> Must be ind indoctrination from the school systems. But yeah, my overall hardest journey is over. My youngest is 18, be 19 this year. My oldest is 22. Morris must have got a phone call. Hello. Oh, Why well, he's gone? I'm still trying to think of great fathers that we know of. But I, I throw off the Peebles. They definitely stood out for me. But it's almost like. That's too generalized a statement for me. Great fathers are like the unsung heroes. They, they're almost not known. When a man is doing exactly what he's supposed to do, he's invisible. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm saying, Haru. Many a great fathers out here. Many, many. Back on scene, Morris. Yeah, man, they be knocking me off my own live. You know how TikTok is. Y'all get me? Yeah, we, he's pretty much saying there's a lot of un great fathers are unsung heroes. There's a multitude of great fathers that we'll never know their names. It's like when a man doing what he's supposed to do, he's invisible. 
and, and and that's the same that's the shame that's why i had to at least do this you feel me because a lot of these guys on this screen they matter of fact every one of them they get they talk shit about these people you feel me dion ain't shit even though he's a super father lavar ball ain't shit even though he's a super father uh bill haney is a super father but they hate the hell out of him you know lebron james it don't matter what he do right it don't matter what he do right they gonna hate him they gonna find a reason to hate him that's you the story of men you could have yeah. divorced your wife or you know not be with your baby mother and be paying it's, child support and taking your children and taking care of stepchildren etc and you still ain't shit you know <laughs> that's the black man that's the story of the black man let's be honest uh like any other coach you're gonna make that man a king he, he's automatically a king you know what i mean the other culture would be like you got with a woman that already had children are you crazy uh-huh mm -hmm. unless she bowing down that's how they gonna feel they gonna feel like hey you better be bowing down to him you better honor that man you know just makes a little sense you feel me the static hell now you got to be crazy you know which we know many people are <laughs> which goes uh, back to you know our society western society as far as our ethnic groups so-called black people are women even when you're doing everything the minute a disagreement come along it's this my baby so it ain't our baby yeah. no more it ain't my baby it's your baby only huh <laughs> yeah i'm talking about it, it, it could be the boy straight y chromosome you're talking about he he identical to me and you still gonna got down you know you're gonna take mine that's all you huh okay that's tough like yeah, i don't care what nobody say up. women love like, like let's be honest women love their boys. custody battle because of that i took custody of all three of my children bro exactly like bro women love their boys more than they do their girls like, I, don't, I don't know if we could be that honest and be that straight up, but that's how it is in real life, bro. You know what I'm I saying? I agree. Because I raised my life. children. I raised my children, you know, to their college until they're 19, 20 years old. Now, they never really had a relationship with their mother. I got a boy and girl between a particular one. Now, my boy is a fucking hippie being spoiled to death, ain't worked in two years, et cetera, et cetera. His mama is spoiling the hell out of him. Now, my daughter by her, my daughter already moved out the house and got her own place like fuck my mama. Yeah, yeah. I already know. I already know. That initiative. Especially, especially when, a, when, a, when a girl has a, a, a father. I mean, so, I mean, some people are just destined for greatness. We know that. But I'm talking about when they got a father, that should be a little more motivation. You know what I mean? All right. But hey. No, in my case, know. my daughter used to blame me. You know, my children had mommy issues. Like, yo, why you take us from our mother, this and that. She, they mother was lying to them. Your father kept you from me, blah, blah, blah. You know, just the lies. Man, you had, so you my, had my daughter and my had son had was like place. blaming me for the their mother's absence. Now, when my daughter lived with her mother for, you know, almost a year before, she was like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Everything that happened in life, I, I'm on. It wasn't father's fault. It wasn't him. Mom's is on some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, that's crazy how you had it in reverse. And, and you part of the statistic that they say uh, single fathers are more successful, you know, than a single mother. It's, it's, it's not a good thing to be a single yeah, that's, mother. And that's a definite. That was something I brought up to my son and my daughter. They was whining to me. I'm like, you have other brothers and sisters. Your mother have other children. They don't have high school diplomas. They might not even have a GEDs. They never been outside the city, state or country like that, really. And here you go with a, a college degree at 18, 19. You know, so what do you think you missed out on life? Because now you're in a better position than your brothers and sisters that your mother raised as opposed to you two that I raised. Exactly. Exactly. Brothers you know, and sisters, they got tattoos, X, Y, Z. They involved in the, the street life, X, Y, Z. Y'all no tattoos. Y'all not in gangs. Y'all never been to jail. 
You've been healthy your entire life, you know? Yep, yep, exactly. You ain't had no uh, NDEs. You feel me? No near death experiences, you know? Exactly. You know, like like other people going out there finding that. They need that club having fun, they dodge bullets. That's a that's an NDE right there. You know what I mean? Like just too much for no reason. Especially all that, that hood drama. You know what I mean? We gonna ride by this hood drama. Is we crazy? Yeah, and believe yeah, I grew up in Chicago and my first baby mom and her entire family, Latin Kings. Another one of the reasons I wanted to take custody of my children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew up yeah, folks like I can't have my kids raised with these dudes. <laughs> uh -uh. Hell no. That's real. Because you know they were going to use them. They were going to use them to make maniacs out of them. Oh, no, they cousins, their uncles, all Latin kings. This is two, three generations of Latin kings. And before all of this happened, the Ambrose and the Dragons, they was throwing cocktail bombs and whatnot at my baby mama house, taking puck shots, you feel? Yep. Yep. That's what made it a little bit easier for me to win in court. <laughs> for real. Hey. That's real. I'm, I'm glad you came out on top because, shoot, however good they can come, come out on top, it's, it's, all, it's all based on what you did years and years ago, for real. So, yeah, even though they might not see it, you know, the kid gets mad when he can't have Skittles for breakfast every day. You know, my 20-year-old's yeah. going through that. Like, you mad because you couldn't have candy for breakfast. That's what you're crying about. Get the fuck mm -hmm. out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mad? You mad? I, I'm not the reason your teeth fell out. Your teeth ain't fall out. You, you should be happy. You know what I'm saying? For real. <laughs> ain't no lie, man. But yeah, man. That's the kind of thing I was just trying to acknowledge today. You feel me? Because it's never acknowledged. You see, they only give us one day out of the year, and then they like to, and then they had the audacity to. Put Pride Month around that, you know. And my, believe it or not, me and my boys, me and my children, arguing on Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, I'm easy. That's easy, bro. You know how I go. And and, and if if they hold their breath one day, what does that matter? Okay, okay. You gave me a break for one day. That's nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that one day, ain't, that's, not, that's not good enough. He tried to, you know, defend his mediocreness and defend his mama to the end, but my daughter right away, <laughs> she wasn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That was an eye opening for, for her. You know, them 12 months. <laughs> You've seen the manipulation, the lies, and she can tell, oh yeah, everything. Everything father said was correct. And I never once really talked crazy about their mama. I always told him, call your mother on Mother's Day. Respect your mother. Your mother's the reason you're here. She carried you. What would he about to bang? But yeah, my daughter, see, uh -huh. it was always some type of manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she younger than the, than, than the son? Yeah, my daughter, you're younger. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but she's still probably a year more mature, a year or two more mature than him. You know what I mean? Two, three years more mature. That's a definite. Again, my boy, he worked. Yeah. His, he just, like I said, he had his damn engineering degree. That fucking eighteen, nineteen man. He started working with the car company. He quit in a couple of weeks. It's been four years, two, three years since college. This boy still ain't worked a single job, living off his mother. My daughter's completely independent. She. Racking in that money, making three thousand a month, et cetera, et cetera. Got her own apartment, X Y Z. She's going downtown. She's living life completely independent. Mm -hmm. But my boy is completely mm -hmm. dependent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know what you mean. He refused. He refused to get a job. You know, he he, he living that pampered life. Got an, he got an excuse for everything. You know, he has a problem for every answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Damn, boy. Damn testosterone, man. You know how it is. Hey, I'm just messing with my oldest. I'm glad he my oldest, because now I can just always shit on him. Your little brother and your little sister more of a man than you. 
<laughs> you, you, went, you went to your mother and you became a bitch, nigga. Your brother and sister, they real. <laughs> hey, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. It seems like we get better as parents. You know, as time goes, you know how it go. Like, for real. Like, like we even seen our parents. Like, I don't know, like, like you the youngest of siblings or, or you the, where you at? I'm an only child as far as my mother. I'm an only. Okay, okay. And on the other side, where you at? I'm the oldest of five. Oh yeah. So 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 all you know is being the oldest. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm sure you saw, especially with pops, how the youngest they got treated so differently. You know what I mean? You be like, damn. You done got soft as hell, you know, as a parent. It's the opposite for me. Like, I was the wild child. I was the wild child, half breed. And I guess my father learned from me, boy. He put so many restrictions and restraints. He even took my brothers and sisters out the country, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got strict on their ass. They mad as hell. <laughs> Complete freedom. They didn't have the freedom I had. Uh huh. That's why I say he got better. He learned, like he did like you. He learned. Yeah, he learned from mistakes. trial and error. Yep. Yeah. You're like, oh, no, I'm not doing that twice. And I'm damn sure not doing it three, four times. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah, man. But you know, all of us, we did good. I'm married, four children, all grown. My, my brother married with his child. He finally had a child. My sister married with three children. My other sister married with a child. So. You know, give it up to my pops. He's a great father, but he under the Arabian act, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, my pops was the only child. And now he got, uh, you know, he had 10 kids. And he got about at least 20, 20 or 20 something grandkids. You feel me? My he got 20 something grandkids going on 30. My my father and my mother, they, they both got like 11, 12 brothers and sisters. Both my parents come from very large households. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have three, four uncles. I have three or four uncles younger than me. Well, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you got one of them. Yep. Yeah, that's how my pops is. Like, like my brothers, I got little brothers that's my son's age. You feel me? For real. But the cool thing about it, they never like if anything, they know that uncle thing almost don't exist at that point. It don't exist, so they never, they never use that card. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't. It's like all right, we all the same things, fam. The second cousins, the uncles, and (laughs) yo, we all, we all in the same ten year range, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Two year, one year. You know what I'm saying? For I'm real. 40. I got uncles yep. 48 and 50. I got I got it. uncles 28 and 35, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got yeah, I got a lot of uh cousins that's 10 and 20 years older than me. Like all of my co- like all of my cousins, they parents are my cousins. They're not my aunts. You feel me? So everybody else be be, be calling them auntie or mama. That's my cousin. You know what I mean? I, I have got a lot cousins of, a lot that's of, 10 I got 20. A whole bunch of yeah. older cousins. Yeah, I got a couple of cousins, 10, 15 years older than me, easy. And because of that, their children yep. are old. You know, they're in between. Like, yeah, we got this awkward 10-year shifts between us, 20-year shifts. You, you know, mom and your daughter both pregnant, granny pregnant at 50, you know, and, and mom's pregnant at 25, you know. So uncle, uncle and nephew born in the same year. Peace. Peace. Peace, peace. Oh. Um, is the pictures, is what you have in the background, is that the uh, topic of uh, discussion? Cause, or, or is it just like a go with the flow type of thing? It started with that topic, then we just started going with the flow. Okay. I mean, because I, I actually had, I actually wanted wanted to use this opportunity to ask you a question about uh about the about the uh, morals 
because it seemed it seemed to me because I used to I, I used to I used to study, right? But it seemed like it's like a different um different groups like you got people who don't subscribe to Noble Drew Ali, the proper to a proper Noble Drew Ali. Then you got some who uh, are just more like a. It seems like they more aligned, like more aligned with like type of Masonic Sufi. It's like, it's like a mix of like Masonic Sufi type of stuff like that. You know what I'm if I'm understanding your question right. Yeah, you have the Noble Drew Ali followers, which is a Sufi Islam. Islamism or a Sufi route. And then you have people that would associate themselves with Moors, but don't associate with the Science Temple in any way. And a way I could break that down is think of the Moor Science Temple as a religious institution and think uh, of what Noble Drew Ali had brought down before even the Science Temple was a truth. And like in my case, I don't necessarily draw off Noble Drew Ali, but Noble Drew Ali is the GOAT. You don't have to believe in anything to know that the so-called black people are Moors because it's written throughout history and law. So you would have the Moors that are speaking strictly on the legalities in the lawful sense as far as paperwork, treaties, who was enslaved, etc. And then you would have the Moors from the Science Temple going off the religious institution and their belief system. Okay, okay. So, how would you classify uh, the people who seem to identify strictly with the strictly with the history? Because I've come across more people that identify with who? Because I've come across more right who like identify strictly with who like identify strictly with the history. You know, like the Moors in Spain and more and uh, Morocco yeah. and stuff, stuff like I'm that. More they don't that I'm, I'm more of that type of more. I'm, I'm identifying with the history. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so when you say, so when you say that you are master teacher, are you? No, nah, that's, that's the brother Yusuf that you're talking to, but uh, but, but, but now nah, we are master the students, but uh, yeah. But 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 what but what you gonna say? What what about it? No, I was gonna say, uh, is is it okay? So I'm assuming that that it's like referencing like Sufi Islam, or is it just like historical? Is the reason why you draw he's referencing historical Islam, Sufi Islam. Sufi is historical. What we call Islam today is Muhammadism. It was ancient. called Muhammadism back in the day. Yeah, it's ancient, but be before Muhammadism, there was the the, the Torah boys and the, the Islam through them. And before that, you had the Sabaeens and the different Sufi sects of people. And it all comes from a esoteric esoteric knowledge, you know. Yeah, I ever heard of uh, Jamal Al Afghani? Wait, who? Jamal Al Afghani. Nah. I'm not if ringing he, the bell right now. If you look it up, he sent your Noble Ali parents to bring him out and study underneath him. He was into the Sufi and all that. But yeah, um, Jamal at Afghani. Yeah, Jamal. I think I'm familiar who you talking about. The brother that um. Noble Drew Ali would have ran into roughly 1880s, 1890s, and he and he was a shriner or something of that order from the other side. Yeah, he was from. He got ran yeah. out. No. He got ran yeah, out. Multiple, head. you know, bogus charges on him, and that's when Noble Drew Ali kind of took over the run after the brother disappeared. So are y'all from? So now you talking about the Sufi mind, brother Yusuf? But uh, who? Okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Ali, confusing him. Like he wasn't even born. He wasn't born until 1886. So. You know, he was like 13. I was 19, just about to ask you about that, yeah. man. I was just about to ask you about that. Prince, uh, Prince, uh, Prince, uh, Prince De Suleiman. I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask y'all what's, what's y'all opinion of him or yeah. if you guys yeah. know about him. Yeah, of course. He was a 93rd degree Mason. Like people think it's only 33 degrees. That's a Shriner. You know what I'm saying? Them people can't go no higher than that. And it takes 40 years for them to get that. At least 40. You know what I mean? So wow. we talking about our people go way beyond some 90 or some 33. You know what I mean? Dr. Suleiman was a 93rd degree 
So he came over here when nobody, nobody had more rank than him. You know? So that's who so I was this, speaking about. He had the highest rank on this landmass. That was Suleiman. Yeah. yeah, yeah Suleiman. The, 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 wait. So is it? I, I I I always read his name to be Prince Day Suleiman. Is that correct? Or was yeah, it? Abdul Hamid Suleiman. Okay, Abdul Hamid Su Suleiman. Okay. And from mm -hmm. if, if 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 my understanding served me correctly, I, didn't he he uh he or he originated in uh not Arabia but uh right here yeah, Sudan the Sudan okay that's where it was Arabia. Okay, I, I, thought, I, I, I thought actually thought, thought Arabia or Iraq but go ahead yeah, both them dudes from Iraq both them dudes not. But I'm well. Let me speak for Jamal Al Afghani. I'm I'm learning about the other guy y'all name. But if I remember correctly, both of them from the Middle East. They not African or American. Okay. 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 I'm looking at Jamal Al Afghani now. Yeah, I think he was Serapis Bay. He is the founder of Islamic modernism, as well as the advocate for pan-Islamic unity in India, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, if you um, get, like, this dude did a piece on him, but I was, you know, when you see something on YouTube, I always double check it. Well, always, but if it interests me, I double check it. And if yeah, I'm just reading his Wikipedia, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you put Noble Drew Ali name with it, uh, maybe the information will come up that he met with Ali, Noble Drew Ali parents and had the parents send, uh, I can't remember his, send Noble Drew Ali out there and kind of got the game from him and sent him back. He went out Egypt. Okay. So, maybe, so, so, but I have, dang, you know what, um, are you guys going to be on live for, for, for like a good little minute. Oh. Uh, I got time today. I got time. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, mean, I, I, mean, I need. I need. I'm start I, another live. I'm definitely gonna have to start another live. But I wanted to uh, just leave this subject like that. Start to upload that. Do what I do. You feel? Uh, cause um. But yeah, we but we can come back on a whole another topic. Uh, no, no, because I, I needed I needed to uh, drop real quick, but uh, take care of something. But I wanted to come back and uh, ask some more questions. Yeah, yeah, you know we'll be back. Well, we'll we'll follow us that way. Whenever okay. we on live, you'll know. <laughs> Let me follow. Yeah, you I did. I just, I just, sure. I just, I just followed the the the, uh, the uh, two other brothers. All right, but <laughs> I will catch up with y'all later, man. Inshallah, peace. Peace. Y'all know I appreciate y'all coming up, helping me out, man. Yes, sir. Y'all always add that value, man. I appreciate it. I hope the people appreciate it. They tap the screen a little, please. I got a new. I think I got a new, new uh, subscriber. That was love. I didn't even see that. That's pre That's peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I subscribed to. But shout out to all the great fathers and the great mothers. You know, it's one love. I promise you, I'm about to learn Spanish. Pick up my Spanish, boy. The Chicago sign look like little Venezuela where I'm at. <laughs> mm.